guys, welcome back to Age of Civilization's History Boogaloo 2. Today, I'm going to teach you how to use the editor for this game. So, I make every single um, scenario that I use in my videos. Um, I've seen a lot of comments talking about, oh yeah, what mod is this? Or whatever. I don't, I don't use mods. I mean, I've used them a few times, but not really. Like... The only time I used a mod was to get this map for the game, which I gave you guys in my other tutorial video. So definitely go check that out if you want this beautiful looking map. Um, anyways, so starting out, um, we have regions, which is basically like we can disable certain regions or whatever. So if we just wanted to play in like Europe or something in a World War II map, all the rest of this would be um, Wasteland. Basically, or we could uh, even select down here, I believe. We could select um, just the United States or, yeah. We can disable certain regions of the world. It's uh, pretty cool. So, we'll just do a map in Europe. Yeah, we'll do a map in Europe. So, then when we press next, we can customize it. So... Say we uh, wanted specific parts of Europe and, or specific parts of America, like say England colonized over here or something, we can uh, deselect this. And then um, if you want to be not as accurate with your brush tool, you just select brush and then you can do this. Otherwise, it's just going to make you click on everything like this, basically, if you don't um, have that off. Or if you have that off, that is. So you can basically just do that. And um, so next, we can manage civilizations, which is basically where you're, how you're going to create your civilization, um, one of them. And then you have a bunch of ones you can select from up here. You can change what ideology they have. You can uh, remove them. And then um, you can also set a capital if you have um, other provinces that they own. So if you go, uh, oh, you need more than one playable civilization. So I guess we're going to need like France and Berlin or, or uh, not, <laughs> not Berlin, but Germany. Um, <clears throat> so once you do this, you can turn flags on, which makes it easier to see who owns what, or you can turn them off. You can use the brush to paint a bunch of them at once instead of just clicking on everything again. That's basically the only thing the brush is used for. Um, and we can just paint everything here that England owns. <clears throat> so I guess if we're doing what they own in World War One, we would just select all that. And this... So yeah, now England owns all of this. And... We can do the same for France if we want. And then we're going to actually go back to the uh, civilization management thing that we were in um, just a second ago. And then if we go back, we can actually manage where the capital is. So we could put the capital of England in Manchester. We could put the capital of France in... Um, just put it in Marseille. Why not? <laughs> um and then the next thing we can do after this is this is the screen where you well we'll assign more provinces quick let's just say germany owns a bunch of stuff i don't know <laughs> we'll just say they own all this or something just to make them playable by the ai or whatever Okay, so, yeah, so now Germany owns all of this, and when we go next, we can set up a scenario name like this, and then we can also do um, diplomacy, we can decide, so basically, the way alliances work, you click new alliance, and let's say we want Britain and France to be in the alliance we do this and that and we can set the color of the alliance and now well it didn't save 
Uh, okay. Oh, now it's working. All right. Yeah, we can set the color of the alliance and stuff. Uh, we'll have them be purple because that looks that looks pretty cool. They're they're in the grand alliance now, and um, you can do relations between nations to start out with. I sometimes do this if I want it to be more historical. Um, so you select one country. It gets a little tricky with how it wants to. Sometimes you got to switch from one to the other to actually have it switch countries. Um, so that's how that works. And then if you, you have to select another country, when you have that main country selected, it'll be in blue or some, some other color. Um, and you can basically... This is the... Um, Britain's relation to the to France and this is France's relation to Britain you can change that and you can set up a non-aggression pact you have to basically drag the two countries and you have the turns up on the top left you can do defensive pact it basically works the same way if somebody de declares war on one of them then they both will de declare a uh, war on that nation and also the way relations work too is if you set the relations too low they'll be at war so that's the way that works and we'll, we'll just i don't know <laughs> I, i'm not planning on going into like a actual game with this scenario so but um, this is just a tutorial on the mechanics um, guaranteed independence is basically the same thing as uh, defensive pact, and military access gives that country military access to that country. Um, I guess we can do guaranteed independence of France. The the UK guarantees the independence of France. Uh, we can do a truce between France and the UK. Why not? And. Yeah, that's basically the diplomacy tab. Um, there's another one that's pretty important. All this stuff, by the way, is just what it starts out with. I usually put my arm, starting army and capitals as zero because it gets annoying trying to set things up and you have to disband all the troops in your capital. I usually just do that. Uh, you can do the starting economy, starting population, starting money. You can put that all the way up or all the way down. It doesn't really matter. Um, it depends on what country, I guess. So you can set that up more... I believe in you can set up the starting money for each nation here uh, individually. You can also do happiness. If happiness is too low, the country might uh, actually break up and start a civil war. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. And also, um, if you have colonies and you set the happiness too low, the country might not civil war, but it will break apart in their colonies, or their colonies will break away from them. Um, Anyways, so setting events is pretty uh, easy. Uh, you put a title here. Um, you have to put the date you want it to activate or else it won't activate. Um, you can put it as repeatable. I never do that. Um, triggers, you can add a trigger. Um, there's a bunch of different scenarios you can do here. Um, it's basically like if, then, um, then you do that. If this is true, then you do that or whatever. It has a specific requirement, basically. Um, so I guess we'll do at war. And if these two civilizations are at war, blank and blank, then they will um, trigger this event. You can show a pop-up or not. Um, basically, you can show there's a description box right here it's not very apparent because lucas doesn't know how to code a game but um you can set up a description and basically just have it say something and then you can also do a picture you have to put that in your um folder though um whatever picture you want to use you it doesn't have like a file path you can upload something to unfortunately so if you have a picture you are going to have to um do whatever file path that's in and then the outcome, you can, there's a bunch of outcomes here, like change ideology, add army, update population, so-and-so. So this is really good for just making uh, sure certain things happen in the game. I've used this before in some of my scenarios, like the 1700 scenario. So that's that. And 
Um, there's also the Palette of Civilizations. Um, this is basically... You can have a custom palette, and also I have to teach you guys how to use the palette, or how to use the, or how to change the palette. So if we just exit the scenario editor by pressing back without saving, so I don't have to save it. So here we are. We're back in the main screen. If we go to the game editor, um, we can basically just go into palette of uh, civilizations color package. We could create a new package. Um, but I'm gonna edit one. I'm gonna edit mine. Um, so if we go up here, we can basically edit the color of France um, to what we want, and then when we press save, it will save it. So that's basically how the editor works. There's a bunch of other things here too. Uh, actually, I'm gonna go over leaders quick because that is important, I think. <laughs> um, so yeah, the leaders are right here. Um, you can create a new leader. You need to have a file path for the... You can go see other where other leaders are located. They're um, portraits. And then you're going to have to drag a file in there. And it has to be the specific size or it won't really work too well. Um, that's in the image name. Um, the name of the leader. And th these are a bunch of uh, modifications to the leader's stats. Um, so that's it for the leader's portion. You can create a city... Basically, you can create a city somewhere, and you can set the level of the city to village, town, city name. It's pretty uh, simple. And then uh, the level of the city is actually how much population it will have. And then um, you can also do... Uh, you can create a civilization. Um, I've created a whole bunch of them before. Basically... Uh, you can create a new civilization, you can set its flag, you can set its color and its ribbon colors, and yeah, and its name. I think I said name already, but I don't know. I said again. <laughs> so yeah, that's about it for the editor for this game. Um, if you guys like this video, please leave a like and subscribe. Um, this might be one of the last videos I do on this game. Um... I might come back to it later. It's definitely a fun game. I've played it a whole ton, but I feel like it's time to move on and uh, play other things. I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.